podcast episode 100. Let's round give ourselves applause. a round of applause. Oh my God. <laughs> We're so proud of ourselves. We did it. Wow. So 100 episodes in and we wanted to do something really special for you guys with this episode. So we're going to break this down into four different parts. Are you excited, Will? Dude, <laughs> how can, can't I not be? How can he not be? Uh, did I say this right? Can, yeah. Can't <laughs> not is a double negative. But I'm really excited. That's my point. <laughs> yeah. He gets really excited. He speaks broken English when yeah, he gets excited. Exactly. So uh, the, part, the first part we're going to get into is we're going to get into kind of our favorite parts of the last 100 episodes or rather 99 episodes of the podcast. We're going to be showing some clips and kind of responding to them. And that'll be really fun because uh, some of those clips just have like the funniest shit in them. <laughs> oh my God. And like massive mistakes of like making a podcast, you Whoa. know, for a hundred episodes. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Many of those were mine probably, but yeah, they were all your fault, by the all way. My fault. <laughs> uh, and then we have a uh, part two, which is going to be a behind the scenes look of what we do here every day kind of like a schedule we actually shot um i shot myself like waking up as a vlog he did himself he did himself <laughs> did you do yourself <laughs> i'm sorry guys this is the pressure of the 100th we're kind of nervous now <laughs> <laughs> oh super nervous but uh will was doing himself um so we both we both like recorded our whole day and just kind of show you guys a behind the scenes look of the different studio rooms and what we do here because that's pretty cool and uh, fun for us to get into. Yeah. And also we had like a little session yesterday, so we recorded all that as well. Yeah. And just fun stuff. And so you get a behind the scenes look at that. And then part three, we're going to be answering some questions that were submitted through Instagram, through the mailing list, through, you know, all sorts of different places, which is really fun. I got some really good questions, so I'm excited to get into them. Some juicy questions about the future. And, and part four, finally, we're going to predict... What might happen by episode 200? I might not be here. I might be dead. You might be on, you might live on Mars in a colony. I might have a in twin a colony brother. of gigolos. I might have an evil twin brother that is trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be know. called Pepe. <laughs> Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, here comes Pepe. <laughs> He's like, I'm Pepe. Can you imagine? He's watching that. I found you. How would he, <laughs> how, would he say, how would he say it in Portuguese? Like, I'm Pepe. I'm coming to kill you. I think you. Pepe is kind of, it's kind of, kind of Portuguese as well. Like Pepe, Pep. I don't know. I always say Pepe <laughs> like this. I don't That's know exactly how to speak how Portuguese say anymore, Pepe. man. I, I was googling yesterday how to say schedule in Portuguese. Really? I don't know how to, to say how schedule. Say I remember because Google helped me, but it's cronograma. Jeez. <laughs> it's kind of Russian, right? <laughs> yeah. Get to the chronograma. <laughs> we must destroy the missiles. <laughs> wait, wait. I thought this was Portuguese. I thought we were in Brazil. Yeah, right? <laughs> that was crazy, man. That's amazing. So let's get right into it, guys. So many people don't know that, but the very reason that I'm sitting here today talking to you, Brad, mm -hmm. it's because of the Radium Podcast. For some reason, shut the fuck up, really, yeah, dude. I, I'm serious. Like the the very reason why I'm here is because one day I was just, you know, looking up stuff on YouTube or whatever, and I found you guys. I found the podcast mm. and I started listening to it. And then I look it up you and I say, oh, let me follow this guy. Like they they have pretty good like music tips and stuff. And I started following you on Instagram, and then I saw your tip of the day, and it became obsessed of you know. About you, <laughs> so I started creep. stalking you, and uh... <laughs> and I and I uh, captured your dog, and yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the very reason I'm here is because of the Radium Podcast, and it's such an honor, and and, and it's very nice for me to be part of it. Not only I started here as an intern at work behind the cameras, and being here in front of the cameras talking to you about music, which is right. my favorite thing in the world. It's, it's very, very nice. That's amazing, man. Yeah, it's it's amazing, man. Uh, and so, what what are your uh, what are some of your favorite? I think I should have you pick kind of the favorite moments because I, I have some ideas, but I think it'd be really cool to hear your favorite moments okay. of the podcast. Yeah. Um, 
I really like that that one that concept. I wasn't even at a radium then, but I was mm-hmm. listening to it. I don't remember. I was working out that day and everything, and nice. I was listening to podcasts on my way to the workout. Uh, and then concept was saying how people react differently in concerts mm. in Asia, in America, and I found found that so funny. Break dancing, like it's just like it's just a totally. Mm-hmm. It's just brand new, so it's just like right. the energy is just crazy. Everyone's down to support. Like you go play a show, like everyone's like wants the T-shirt. Everyone's Instagramming you. Everyone's right. following you. You're like you tell someone that you're a musician or a rapper, they're just like instantly like, "What's your Instagram followed?" Right. Oh, you have they're an like, al- done you have, and done. You have an <laughs> Apple on Apple. You have an album on Apple Music. Download. Where else can I stream it? I'm gonna share it to my yeah. friends. I'm gonna text message it to everybody in my friends list. Like instantly, you know. Yeah, but you you also like have to remember that LA has got to be the hardest market in the world to perform in. I think that New York is. You think so? Yeah, it's yeah probably, I, think that, I think that New York yeah. is even worse. Probably for him. Like New there. York is just sort of like people just. And they're like, hella cool, like like zombies, and like you're like <laughs> you're like yo. When I say I love, you say whiskey, and like the dude's like looking around him to see if anybody else is yeah, saying it yeah. before he can say it. And it's like yo, just you paid to come here. It's so weird. <laughs> like you paid to come here, have fun. You it's know, so like that's weird. what I think is so incredible about Asia. It's like. Bro, you walk into a club and, like, everyone's dancing, whether they can dance or not. They don't care if they look stupid. Right. Like, they're like, I came to have fun. Dancing is fun. I'm yeah. going to dance. I love the idea. It's it's funny to me because when I think about music, especially live music, mm-hmm. it's in the United States, it's, like, totally lost its luster. Yeah. Because I think everybody feels like they can just do it. Yeah. Well, well, I can do that. I have a computer so I can make my own records. But what a lot of people don't understand about that whole concept, yeah. <laughs> pun, in, pun intended, <laughs> right, is that you should always let people become masters of the art and the craft and let them represent that and celebrate that, right? Yeah. But I feel like nowadays, especially in the U.S., and this is really U.S. because like even Europe... South America, like South America, Central America, people dance, people have fun, people like to let loose in America, in the US, it's sort of like, bro, I can make that on my cell phone. (laughs) Like everyone thinks they can do it. Yeah. But then you hear their music and you're like, bro, you're so way off. It's like if uh, if like Michelangelo was still alive and someone was like, oh, I can paint that. And then like show them a little stick figure drawing and be like, the fuck is that, dude? So it is kind of a funny thing because I think that it's just a cultural difference here. Just yeah. because it's so it's so normal to make beats now and right. have FL Studio cracked or have Logic Pro on your computer and right. and just dabble with music. So it's like, of course I can do that too. I can make a song. It's right, like, right. Yeah. I think also it's the simplification of the process made people think that, oh, anyone can do that like if you can do that in a tiktok put in a 50 second tiktok how you did this whole song it why is so valuable you know why yeah, yeah. you're making millions out of it uh but yeah man i really love what you said uh another moment that was so fun it wasn't even it was funny for me because i remember at that time mm-hmm. that episode actually caused a lot of uh, discussion and people were commenting and oh i know exactly i know where you're going with oh this. my god <laughs> i'm talking about garen on episode <laughs> 53 and he he said it in the middle of the podcast that chris brown is better than micah jackson let, let's let, let's hear him say yeah. it. i, I want to see this <laughs> oh my god. i forget this this is a funny one but the difference is to the naked eye, to the real creative, who really sings better? If you put Michael Jackson and Chris Brown in one room and you say, entertain me, and I'm sitting here in one chair and it's one me, it's no audience, it's no cameras, it's no glamour, it's none of this, entertain me. I'm going to be more entertained by Chris Brown than I am Michael Jackson. Ooh, that's a, that's hard. Dude. Entertain, is it really uh, hard? Are we talking dance or is Chris moves? Brown going to pop like just like Michael Jackson? <clears throat> he gonna do some backflips. He gonna sing. <laughs> he gonna do a yeah, whole can, lot can more. Can Michael Jackson do backflips? That's he the can. real question. He gonna Michael Jackson. He's gonna need a Michael trampoline. Jackson. Are we talking Michael Jackson? With his energy. Yeah. Yeah. His energy is entertain more. Is is like that's the gift. Yeah. Yeah. That that's where it goes into the mm-hmm. gift versus the talent. Yeah. My, I'm not saying Chris Brown has a talent. He has a gift too. But I'm just saying if we really just stripped it down to the creative ability. Mm. 
Chris Brown has more creative abilities than Michael Jackson. Let's be 100. Let's be honest. Okay, so I... Chris Brown writes better than Michael Jackson. He sings better than Michael Jackson. Hey, we got to create a poll. He dances better than Michael Jackson. Come on, bro. Let's just be 100. And I'm not saying that in no way to disrespect Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is the greatest artist of all time. Mm -hmm. That was hilarious for me, man. And I was behind the camera that day. I remember... Uh, and I was at the moment, I was just like, oh my God, that's going to be so, ah, <laughs> people are going to go crazy with that. <laughs> it, just, it just made me cringe even on the, on the podcast. I was like, yeah, Ooh, wait, I, yeah wait a second, man. Your wait, you're like destroying my childhood. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you know what? I think it really is. When he said that, I was kind of like looking at him like, how old is he? You know? Yeah. Then I started realizing, oh, he's, pr- he's probably like in his twenties, like. You know, maybe like early 20s. Right. And for me, being in my mid 30s and listening to that, I was just kind of like, no, it's just a different time period. Yeah. It's like you came up with Chris Brown. I came up with Michael Jackson. I was born in 83. Yeah. So for me, I was just kind of like, ooh, that one's, I don't know about that. (laughs) And, And also, like, the big thing that, like, for me, really made me cringe is that Michael Jackson innovated. Michael yeah. Jackson came out with shit like like Thriller. Yeah. Michael Jackson worked with orchestras and orchestrators and Quincy dancers Jones and, and dancers and light shows and all sorts of stuff. And, and sure, Chris Brown works with that stuff, but he was he was born and bred and and birthed from Michael Jackson. Exactly. Like you don't have a Chris Brown without Michael Jackson. Exactly. So it was just funny for me. I was like, <laughs> dude, what? You're putting the you're putting the chicken before the egg, bro. Like you're. You have to have the you have to have the the influence first, yeah. you know? Like like you were literally not real. You're not even a thing if there was no Michael Jackson. Perfect. Very very well said. Um uh, a third moment that I really remembered, um that was kind of funny, but I got the what he was talking about. Uh, and I think on that episode specifically, you guys were talking about the evolution of hip hop, how hip hop wasn't the same thing anymore. It was transforming uh, itself yeah, and, and pop music and, pop and how music it became pop and, music and urban and all those terms. And I remember on Mansa interview, episode 44, he came up with this uh, thesis that he researched something somewhere. Uh, it was funny at the time, but like after listening Makes sense, but I want your thoughts on that now that you have a, another mindset. You know, it's been like more than two years ago. So let's hear it again. I was, I was doing some some research on <laughs> <laughs> this uh, philosophical top paradox called Theseus's paradox, and what it is is education time. No, education it's a, time, it's the idea of if you have a boat, right, and the boat deteriorates over time as things do mm-hmm. and it might lose uh, a sail or it might lose um just the wheel right mm-hmm. and you replace the wheel right so the idea is you have this boat and over time it deteriorates and you've replaced now every piece of the original boat yeah is it still the same boat and that's theseus's paradox that's the idea essentially yeah. mm-hmm. and i think what we're going through with hip-hop and we like i don't even think i'm part of the hip-hop community right (laughs) um but i think what's happened with that genre or that whatever you want to call it is it's gone through sort of this theseus paradox where every piece of it has been slowly replaced to the point where it's like do we still compare like what's the last big hip-hop song i can't think do we still compare hotline bling or i I guess that's do we still compare that to fucking (laughs) yo a hip hop (laughs) <laughs> like yeah. and it's like yo these are two comp- we've but we're still calling it this one thing and it's yeah, like yeah. yo this is a completely kind of different joke. thing you remember this conversation yeah. what what brings it to you like what is your opinion these days about it oh man i love i love the uh the conversation and i love this episode because it was so manta yeah know? he's just like <laughs> he's like being all like in his head and like thinking about stuff and saying random shit in the middle of a conversation that you're trying to guide but yeah. he's just going to kind of go on his own tangents but this was actually really relevant to the conversation we were talking about hip-hop pop music how how hip-hop has really turned into pop music and pop music really just kind of takes over all things all genres right and um the fact that hip-hop is basically in everything now right like you listen to dance music there's hip-hop in it yeah you know um there's influences of like hip-hop throughout all pop music almost facts you know almost all pop pop music 
Um, but this whole like paradox thing and like what he's talking about is a concept that just makes sense to me now. Like, I think that because it happens over such a long period of time, we don't see that, you know, we don't think of it like that until it's shifted so much. And now we're at a period where it's like, you can't call that hip hop. You can't call right. that, you know, right. you can't call that punk rock. You can't call that metal. You can't right. call that house music. Yeah. You know, but now yeah. we call everything all these different things. And there's new genres now, you know, we have now synth wave and chill wave and vapor wave. And <laughs> I mean, dude, like I've been, you know, just putting out my own records and it's like going into like submit hub to submit to playlists and stuff. And I'm like, I don't know what my song is. You know what I mean? <laughs> And yeah. I don't think most people do know what they're making anymore because they're yeah. just making music. Yeah. And what pop music is now is really hard to define because, I mean, even just the latest release from Justin Bieber and that other kid, uh, Kid Her Lowry or Lowry yeah. or whatever. Leroy, yeah. Kid yeah. Leroy. Like that's it's like straight up that song. That track is like a um, like an 80s kind of vibe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's and it has like that synth wave kind of vibe to it. And it was like produced by Charlie Puth, you know, mm -hmm. and Charlie Puth probably wrote a lot of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, what is it? Is it pop? Is it hip hop? Because kid uh, Leroy or whatever is on it. Is it pop because Justin Bieber's on it? Like what what makes things pop? What makes things hip hop? What makes things synth wave? What makes things 80s? Right. Even mm -hmm. 80s, like saying that term mm -hmm. nowadays, just because there's an 80s drum machine on it. Yeah, or a synth. All of a sudden it's 80s. Like, oh, yeah. it's an analog synth. Yeah, but the analog synth that we're putting on this stuff now is not from the 80s. Right. It's a synth plugin. Right. And if it is a synth from the 80s, it's like a Juno or something. And it's been used for decades. Like who, you know, we don't. We don't think like that anymore as producers. We don't go like, and, and the general public, we know how the general public thinks, you know, as a producer, you have to. So when you're making something, you're constantly going, oh, the general public's going to think this is so 80s mm -hmm. or this is super 70s, you know. Well said, well said. Um, a legendary podcast that I remember and I was blown away when I watched, when I was binge watching all the episodes, it was the too short one. And oh, it's yeah. definitely one of, one of the most legendary people you guys had on the podcast by then and one thing that he said that really struck to me is about generations and how he's not trying to be you know the new thing or pursuing the new thing and you know being a new pop artist on hip-hop yeah. he's instead he's embracing change um but also helping the new generation to understand how to navigate the industry. So I'm going to play it back and uh, definitely I need your, your thoughts on that because it's been a while since I watched that one. That one is awesome. Yeah. It's a great, great episode. Embrace what happens to a certain extent. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to do the latest dance. I'm not trying to necessarily uh, dress like a, a high schooler, but at the same time, you know, I don't want to be like, like a yeah. like my audience is like only like forty plus or something. You know? Yeah, right, so right. I'm in tune, man. But at the same time, it's, like, it's the whole stay in your lane factor. I've been my whole career. I've been staying in my lane. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say like you you've actually done a really good job of that, man. Like, and if you really want to be in tune in touch with the youth as an artist and you're an older artist, work with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, don't no, no, try sure. to be like them. Work with them. Yeah, they, we, they we would ask, when I work with younger artists, they don't want me to be like them. They're like, man, I want you to do too short. Yeah, you do. Oh, you, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, that's how I survive. I don't, I don't change my flow or or my subject matter or whatever it is. I don't yeah. change me to yeah. fit in with them. That I'm like, that's, that's a call to collaboration. So Love wise. It. So wise. Love it. But you know, like the thing that really sticks out to me the most on this is that he says when the newer generation of music makers hits him up. They don't want him to come on and be doing what they're doing. They're like, do too short. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that's like, that's super interesting because I think there's a lot more room for that in the music industry. Right. So for example, everything's like going back to this eighties, nineties sound, right? Right. Even seventies with like silk sonics and stuff like that. Right. right? So we have all these different sounds and, if you remember when the robots, uh, they went back and they reached to, um, you know, the greats for guitar and stuff. 
um, what's his name? Nile Rogers, right? Oh, Daft Punk. Yeah, yeah. So Daft Punk like reached out to Nile Rogers and yeah, they're like, yeah. dude, we need your guitar on everything. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I think that was a huge hit. That was a huge success, yeah, that yeah. album was. Yeah. And they even had like analog synths and like legendary analog synth uh, programmers and players on it and uh, drummers on it, classic drummers and recorded classic bass players yeah. from the 70s. Yeah. Now, this is the same kind of concept that's going on right now where we have these 80s throwback things. And when you you got like the Justin Bieber's and the kid Leroy's or whatever, uh, I still don't know his name. So <laughs> I keep fucking it up. But uh, and nor do I really care for his music. So right. I'm kind of making fun of him a little bit. <laughs> but whatever. He might not just be around, you know, in a little bit. Yeah. But um, but, you know, these kids like they come out and they do something with like Charlie Puth. It's kind of interesting. It's like. Yeah, that's cool, but like I would way rather hear like an album of, you know, this stuff done with an 80s legend. You know what I mean? With an 80s producer. Like what would they do? How would they really make it cool? And then throw the pop writers and the the writing pack of whoever the fuck got in the room and wrote that song Could with those kids. Could you imagine making What is the name of that band from uh Take on me. Take yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, make Justin Bieber with them. Would be yeah. a, it would be incredible. Yeah, that's the, that's the whole point. It's like, why yeah. are they not doing that? Yeah. You know, yeah. like a lot of people aren't doing that. They're just trying to take things from the 80s. But it's like, why not just get the guys that like have those drum machines, like literally the vintage drum machines and keyboards yeah. sitting around in their studios and make something that's special. Yeah. That also has like a lot of authenticity to it. Right. And I feel like that's what Two Short's really saying here is like people want that authenticity of that Bay Area sound from that era, but then they want to throw some new rap on there. They want to throw some new flow on there. They want to th throw some new writing on there right. and make it more exciting and just kind of like combine eras. And we're doing that all wrong, I think. Right. You know, everybody's trying to like kids that have never I mean, they were born in the 90s or even the 2000s and they're trying to make 80s sounds. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why? <laughs> By never listening to an 80s song. Like, yeah, never listening to an 80s song either. <laughs> like you listen to The Weeknd and you think that that's new. Yeah, you know, exactly. like, no, that's very synth wavy fucking, you know, movies from the 80s, like straight yeah. up, you know? Yeah. Very cool, man. And to end this section of the, the radio podcast, I really want to play my favorite part of the interview with Adam22. That was a, a very cool interview. I was behind the cameras as well, so I could feel the vibe of the interview. There was moments that he was, you know, more uh, reclusive. There's moments that he was more extroverted. And this moment, especially it's towards the end of the interview, he was really, really touched when he started talking about... Um, XXX yeah. and his relationship with him and how that relationship changed everything. So I'm going to play that and we can talk about it. Being willing to sit and do an interview with me co-signs me in their mind of right. like, oh, well, he can't be a bad guy. He's got to be all right. He did a thing with Thug. Like, all right, cool. Like, and I've always like mm -hmm. just sort of recognized that that like, you know, the X thing was like a total accident because he was just a random ass SoundCloud rapper that I thought was kind of tight and just yeah. did an interview with him and then just happened to maintain a friendship. And then that had just so happened to be like the biggest thing career wise that I ever did because he exploded to such an extent. And I was one of the only people that really had like a line to him mm -hmm. that could like interview him and do all this kind of stuff. Like he wouldn't do anything with any of the media companies, yeah. but then he would hop on stream with me or academics and just talk to us because he trusted us. You know, that's kind of crazy to think that like yeah, we had that, whereas all these media companies didn't. And that's just became one of the biggest things in my life. Just from having one good friendship with one dude who ended up being really, really important. Did right. you see it in the beginning? Did you see like his, his, his career yeah. expanding to, you know, I saw him just being like this magnetic personality, but mm -hmm. it, it took me a while to realize that his music was going to be able to be as big as it got because nothing coming from that scene or that world had ever gotten even close to as big as that. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, 
X comes from the same scene as like Space Ghost Perp and you know yeah. dudes like Puya and Bones and like mm. those are some of the dudes like, like somebody like uh, Puya is one of the first interviews I ever did. Some of the X like X Space or Space Ghost Perp affiliates, the Raider Clan guys, are some of the first interviews I ever did, and they were dope as fuck to me. They were huge in my mind because they could pack you know a show in LA with like a thousand people. Mm -hmm. But then X came along and all of a sudden was just doing numbers that were completely out of whack with yeah. anything I thought was possible. I didn't see that coming. It's it's, it's crazy like to even think about that and like to pull something out of that for anybody listening and watching right now i think the most important thing that he's saying and that that he's getting across here is that he stuck with what he really loved which was soundcloud rap at the time mm -hmm. and that was like really what he was committed to and discovering these new artists that he thought were really dope yeah. and they were doing something dope right um I think a lot of people are chasing trends. They're trying to get on the billboards. They're trying to get on these Spotify playlists. And I mean, to everybody out there right now watching this and listening to what's going on and hearing from all these people that have had illustrious careers in music, like they're making millions of dollars in music. That's what it's all about. It's all about finding your passion for it and finding the thing where you fit in that puzzle piece and loving what you're doing, loving the sounds you're making, the music you're making, the artists you're working with, the producers you're working with, and really how you do things and who you are and putting that out there and just continuing to put it out there. And just to hear him talk about XXX like that, where it's like nobody was doing those numbers. Nobody mm -hmm. was doing that kind of thing. But there were some SoundCloud rappers out there selling out shows of a thousand people <laughs> in Los Angeles which is a big deal because that is a living. That's like a hundred thousand dollars a year in music or yeah. more, yeah. you know, that means they can go tour. They can go to Ohio and sell out even more. Yeah. You know, so to me, that's a really big deal. And I think that it's a huge lesson that I have to almost just watch this again myself, you know, yeah. because it, I just think there's so much game in here that Adam drops. Yeah. I mean, he's someone that's interviewed so many legends yeah. in music. And probably just soaked up so much game For and, sure. and heard so many stories. And I think all the stories you're going to hear in this podcast episode have the same line of thread of like similarity going throughout them. Right. And it's always that they're artists that care about their art and they're trying to do what they do. Like Young right. Thug was doing Young Thug. XXX yeah. was doing XXX. And all these guys that he interviewed were the people that just made art and made stuff they loved and were creative and kept going into the creativity. They weren't trying to be like, you know, Drake. Yeah. They weren't making Drake records. Absolutely. I think the biggest lesson I took from this episode, specifically in this part, is he was just being nice to a guy that he's just being nice to another human being trying to help him, you know. Um, and it happened to be the biggest thing of his career you know mm. um we we most times we forget that music is about people it's yeah. about connection the man. connection and and the uh, and the impact that you want to have you want to make people cry laugh or be mad or you know re be Happy, rebel whatever joyous. exactly and he was doing <laughs> that with with uh with xxx and that's what happened he was just being human and and putting himself out there trying to help and yeah, and help, and it happened. Yeah, so you guys have to go back on all these episodes because there's so many, so many, game. so many great episodes. But there's so much game and so many things that, like, even I, the person in the interviews and the person hosting these podcasts, I still have so much to gain from these interviews and going back on. Them. All right, so now for part two of this podcast being the uh, centennial podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if the podcast had a voice, it would be <laughs> 100 years. No, it's only 100 podcasts, not 100 years. So okay, we're good. gotcha. I mean, my knees feel like I'm 100 years old. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now we're going to get into something really cool. Uh, yesterday, basically, Will and I shot our own stories and our own camera of like literally waking up to going through the whole day here at radium Bathroom, in hollywood everything yeah and, <laughs> and uh just kind of day in the life you know so i thought it'd be really cool to share that with you guys and show you like hey maybe it's not as glamorous as you think it is or maybe it's very cool and glamorous and yeah. uh we're just missing it 
<laughs> yeah, we just we just wanted to give people a taste of how is to be in the industry. Like people look at those, you know, famous studios and parties and all that, but the day to day might be a little different of what you might think. Yeah, it's not always a, a day where you're just uh, interviewing too short and. Uh, <laughs> You know, recording Drake and then and going, going to on a, a Foo Fighters concert, going and... to a Foo Fighters concert <laughs> VIP, you know, so um, let's get into it. Yeah, let's play it back. Here it goes. All right. 6 a.m. It's time to go. Good morning, everyone. It's 530. I just woke up and I'm going to freshen up and start my day. Let's go. Always gotta wake up and say what's up to the pups. Good boy. Good boy. How's a good boy? What's up, Fred? Fred. Oh, God. <laughs> Love you guys. There's always something nice about waking up and it's still dark out. I think that that, uh, that kind of just gets me going, you know? It keeps me motivated, but it's also just quiet which means I can get some work done. So the first thing I gotta do, and what I do every morning, make up a smoothie, get some caffeine in me. Let's go. I just meditated and I'm about to journal and get my coffee. One thing that I have to do every morning, actually every night before bed, is I already leave my coffee machine um, set. So when I wake up, I already have fresh coffee. I can't stand, I, I mean, I don't, I don't function until my first cup of coffee, so don't talk to me before that. Breakfast champions right there. Let's get to work. All right, now we got to head downstairs. We got to get to work, get to the studio. I uh, usually want to be working by 6.30 a.m. So if I'm at that point, then uh, I'm getting what I need to get done, done. So let's uh, let's get into this messy ass studio and um, let's get to work. So I literally start my day the same way pretty much every single morning and I have been for years now, like at least four years. Um, and the next thing I do in the morning, uh, just to get aligned and know exactly what I'm doing, I don't just like get to work, like, you know, start making music or something. Um, what I do is I start by writing down my goals. So my goals, and then I have critical tasks for the day. And I usually have five critical tasks that I need to get done every day. Just got my coffee and now I'm ready to start my day. Part of my morning routine as well is to journal. 15, 20 minutes, usually put like a meditation song, you know, like a, a very calm frequency. It's just something I like to do every morning. This is my studio, my home studio. I'm still setting up, you know, putting panels and you know, the acoustics. It's a, it's a simple studio, just a simple setup. All right, so now I've done about three and a half hours of work. I usually do about three and a half to five hours of work. And then I go and uh, get a run in, get 45 minutes of exercise in twice a day. So I'm gonna be doing that right now. Let's go on a run, let's get it. Usually in the mornings, um, I work on my own stuff on my project, Will. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. Working in this new track with this guy called Jesse. He's really talented. <laughs> All right, time to go up hill number one. Ooh. Let's go. All right, hill number two. <laughs> Let's get it. Oh yeah, baby. You know what they say, it's lonely at the top. <laughs> Where's everyone? Where's everyone at? <laughs> you know, you guys hate confident people. You hate to see people be confident. You just call it cocky or arrogant. But cocky or arrogant means you don't actually get any results. 
It's called confidence. I'm confident in myself and in my achievements. <laughs> anyway, love you guys. All right, so I just finished working on my stuff in this morning uh, and I'm about to hit my gym here. I have a personal gym in my place, which is basically like a squat rack, some weights, like all, all I need, to be honest. Um, and what I practice, usually it's like a mix of CrossFit, weightlifting, um, you know, strength training, calisthenics. So it's just like body weight with weightlifting, just a little bit of everything, to be honest. Well, it's 11.15. Uh, I just left my place to go to Radium. And the traffic is, doesn't seem to be that bad. Usually it's a little worse. But um, yeah, today, today is not that bad. This is nothing, you know. This is like Sunday in Sao Paulo. All right, just got here at Radium. And <laughs> that is already 100%. Let's see what he's doing here. Money, man. Right. Dollars money, dude. <laughs> Dollar bills, baby. That's what we do here. No, give me the money. Yeah, give me the key. Give me the key. <laughs> In Z. There are the gatekeepers here. Oh my god. Wait. First thing I always do is check my email to see if Brad sent me anything special that um, I need to work today. Uh, if not, I just start the main content of the page. Usually we have a piece of content that comes out and then I usually do a IGTV or IG version to the next day. Brad is having a session with David Nope. Um, we got just gonna try to get some footage in. That's one of the part, hey, inside, 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 Fred. Hey, Z, inside. Inside now. Inside now. That feels real nice. Is it a ghost? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> What's going on, man? Sorry, brother. Pulling it up so and out. Part baby. of my morning routine is I wake up and watch Will's workout videos. <laughs> Has a poster of me in it. <laughs> then never work out. <laughs> poster. Of... I don't want to tell anyone about that. Will pulls up and he pulls I out. I know can you we, do. Can we cut that out of the video? <laughs> I, know. I know you do. This, this... That's great. <laughs> Marco, get it together. It's important to say that most of my day, it's basically rendering stuff. <laughs> it takes a long time to render. I've been working in the second project today, which is our ads for our producer packages. The creatives, you know, trying to change different formats, um, always updating stuff, stuff like that, you know, making sure people are getting the value. All right, just finished workout number two. It's right around eight o'clock now. Say what's up, Zig. Zig is a good dude. It's Freddy, Freddy's an animal. But yeah, it was a good day overall. Had a session with uh, David Nolf and Marco Flores. Marco's a guitar player. David's a singer, working on a new track with him that I'm actually featured on vocals and I'm producing and I'm mixing and I'm mastering the track and it's called Feels Like Summer. So I'm really excited to get that one out and you guys, uh, I'm also doing like this 75 hard challenge, which is uh, drink a gallon of water, do two workouts a day, 45 minutes. Um, gotta be on a diet. So I'm not eating any gluten or dairy and I'm also just eating clean. So I'm not having like, you know, anything greasy or anything uh, really saucy sort of thing. And then, um, yeah, I've just been doing that for about 35 days straight. Oh, no alcohol as well, which is actually really pretty tough in the music biz. Um, but let's go see what uh, let's go see what Will's up to. All right, so Will's in here. He's grooving. He's grooving and editing. He's in the edit zone. Tap, tapping in, tapping in. 
So, you know, it, it, Will's always got us on uh, on all the cool content, great branding, you know. Look at this stuff, man. Look at that. Looking good. So we're just making like banner ads and uh, different ads for Google and YouTube. And, um, you know, it's just a constant battle. Always, uh, always creating, always getting new hooks, new offers out there, trying to help more people connect with more people that are in music and are kind of like at that top level that are trying to get to that extra sauce that mixing and mastering that platinum mixing and mastering that grammy nominated mixing you know what i'm saying so will's always helping out with everything he's on lives he's doing song reviews he's petting puppies taking care of my nephews that's it those nephews man we got the nephews in the house <laughs> anyway excited to uh excited to share all this with you guys and hopefully you're really enjoying this podcast episode episode 100 it only took us over four years to get here and uh hopefully you're really enjoying all the content that we've been putting out here at radium records we've just been building this thing humbly right out of my pocket <laughs> and uh just having fun with it so keep in the loop stay in touch always like always show love subscribe to the channel share the stuff that's all uh that's really all i ask for that's all we really want we just want to help and uh, connect with more people Love you guys. All right, so if you get a behind the scenes, you realize how sweaty I usually am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm typically sweating. I'm typically running and doing sweaty stuff. And, and also how little sleep we actually have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Wow. Waking up way too early. Yeah. In this part of the podcast, we're going to get into some questions that were submitted by you guys, which is really exciting because we've never done this before. And I don't know why we haven't done this before on the podcast, uh, but it's something we've wanted to do for so long. And now, since it's episode 100, it's here. We're answering your guys' questions. Yeah. I want to continue to answer your guys' questions and help you guys out as much as I can. Let's go. Let's go. I got, I got stuff from Instagram. I got stuff, DMs, all that stuff. So cool. I'm just going to pull one up uh, that Let's I've go. got right here off Instagram. And this is from at ocwave.afc. <laughs> weird ass, weird ass handle, man. You, you got to figure it out. Uh, the question is, should striking balance between familiarity slash novelty be of an artist con conscious concern? Now, I think what he's asking here is, is should you be worried about becoming familiar, branding yourself, versus like novelty being, um, you know, making more modern records or doing something, you know, outlandish to get attention. Right. Um, I'm going to be 100% with you. You need to figure out who you are. And a lot of the times with music or art, that's what most people have the biggest struggle with is figuring Facts. out who they are, what their voice is, how they sound, what they like, all that stuff. And the best way to do that, there's no other way to do it actually, besides just making the music, making tons of music and going into, I think repetition is the the mother and father of learning, Yeah. but it's also that you need mass quantity before you're gonna get to quality, okay? A lot of people don't understand this. They think I need to work on this one song and I need to just keep perfecting it and then I'll release a song when really, no, you need to make a thousand songs and then you might get to a good song, you know, within those thousand. You, so it might true. be the third one you do. It might be the, the 300th. It might be the, the 10,000th. But you got to keep going and you need to learn the process and you need to discover yourself. And that's what art and music is all about. It's a self-discovery tool, truly. Um, you're going to find a lot of the times up front when you're making music, you're going to sound like other people because the, all your influences come out, right? Yeah. Oh, you've been listening to this producer and that rapper and this artist and those people and this beat maker. And you just kind of start making stuff that sounds a lot like those people. And then sooner or later, you have your sound turn into just sort of a melting pot of all those sounds, which then pops and springs out you, right? And that's your sound and that's who you are. Um, and I think you chasing novelty or chasing like consciously, like trying to brand yourself and do all this branding stuff, while a lot of people talk about it on Instagram, your brand comes about when you come about, okay? Right. So you start winning, you start getting streams, you start getting fans, 
then when you start doing all that, that's how your brand is developed. It's not the other way around where people think, I need a logo, I need all this stuff, I need colors, I need schemes, I need a music video, I need this branding recognition uh, before they even make any music. And I think that's a massive mistake. I think that you need to focus on the music, you need to focus on making great music and put your money and attention, time, effort, your investments into creating music that's undeniable and stuff that you like, stuff that you want to stream over and over and over again that you would listen to 10 years later, you know? Mm -hmm. Like we used to when we had uh, CD players and shit where we'd have CDs in the back seat. Yeah. And we'd pull the, the CD out of the back seat and be like, oh, I want to jam this, you know? Yeah. This is a five year old album. Uh, that case with 36 CDs. Yeah, yeah, the, the so case, nice. yeah. And you go like, oh, I haven't heard that shit in six years. Yeah. I'm going to play that whole album. So right. Nice. So you want to find stuff uh, and find your sound. It's really important. That's awesome, man. Um, I'm going to try to, to answer one here as well from our Radium Roundtable member, Chris Dingman. Dingman has been doing so great with us. He's um, yeah, man, he's a good dude. Such an example. Uh, Shouts to Dingman. Yeah. All of the many options. What is the most critical area to invest your money in to advance your career? Uh, on my opinion, would be two areas, to be honest. Um, one is education. Educate yourself in whatever you're doing. If it's production, go learn production. If it's mixing and mastering, just go learn the craft. If it's becoming a better songwriter, you have to pay someone to teach you how to become a better songwriter. Or just go, you know, to camps, songwriting camps, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so education, it's, it's really, really important. doesn't matter how you do it if it's through youtube if it's a college degree you have to educate yourself and the second thing it would be networking is to meet people and unfortunately that costs money in some way uh you know to go out to events costs money to spend your time that you should be making money and doing other stuff you're reaching out to people you're talking to people you're networking you're going to coffees and events and you know having people over for free sessions that's all part of networking and creating your your perfect music network if you may so i think those two things those two pillars for me are so critical to advancing your music career that um everything is secondary marketing is secondary branding is secondary you know everything it's education in meeting people yeah, and I, I to solidify this, I think when you're first getting started, even in your first five years, the only thing you should spend money on and invest in is yourself. And that has everything to do with educating yourself, has everything to do with advancing your skills and stop buying a bunch of plugins, stop mm -hmm. buying a bunch of gear that you don't need, you don't know how to use and invest more on learning how to use that stuff. Um, you know, even if it means that you got to borrow the equipment or you go over to a friend's house or you rent a studio, um, just learn, you know, and invest in you. Um, one of my favorite things that I've ever heard uh, was from a business mentor of mine. And he said, basically, you know, I, I told him on a call because I pay for mentoring, right? Because I think it's really important. Um, I pay like $600 a month for it. And I asked the question in the group and I was like, look, I have like $85,000 left in student debt, student loan debt. Is that something I should worry about? Should I be like trying to pay my debts down? And he was like so emphatic about it. He was like, no, absolutely not. He's like, what you should work on is yourself. You should invest in yourself. You should invest in your skills and your learning and become great at business and sales and marketing and whatever you need to do to make sure that that $85,000 in debt doesn't seem like a big deal because right now that $85,000 in debt isn't paying you. So why would you want to pay for it? Why do you want to go and invest your, you know, your $12 an hour into trying to pay that down when you're not learning new skills, you're not going to turn that $12 an hour into $24 an hour or $50 an hour. What you should be working on is just trying to duplicate your skills and your learning and yourself. So you become much more valuable. And that's just another way of saying what Will said, but I think it's really, really the most important thing. You should not be buying into Bitcoin. You shouldn't be investing your money into stocks. You shouldn't be doing any of that shit because the truth is, is like you don't have the skills to know how to duplicate that money and then keep it and keep growing it and scaling it. 
So if something goes wrong, i.e. volatility, and if you don't know what volatility is, just check it out. Just look it up on a dictionary. You got a phone in front of you and literally understand that if you cannot understand and be big enough and have the skills enough to keep growing and scaling that money, you're literally throwing money away because you're just not there. So if you invest in yourself first, you're always going to win 100%. So let's get into another question because uh, that, that was a great question. Yeah. I love that. Because it's at the core of everything. Yeah. It's really at the core of music business, but it's the core of life. Yeah. Like you want to do anything in this life. Like you have exactly. to fucking invest in yourself. Exactly. So I got actually a couple in my uh, personal DMs, which I really thought there were a couple really dope ones in here. So I'm going to answer these. Give me un momento. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. Hit the like button if so far you like this episode. We made with a lot of love. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, yeah, you'll be you'll be with her with with us here in the next episode. You'll be with her. With her. With her. With her, you will be. It's a it's an entity. It's a feminine entity. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's an entity that is radium. <laughs> I love that, dude. You'll be with her. Go be with her. I feel like we're like Scientologists or something. You'll be with her. They're like, what the fuck? Did we're actually. Wait, wait. What did Will just say there? <laughs> we're actually a coat. <laughs> okay. So I got a question here and I think it's a, it's actually a good one. It comes from at Sybil underscore eight dot darkness. <laughs> I just love you guys. Love. IG handles. All right. What is your best experience in your career? God, that is. Wow. That has to be one of the hardest questions I've been asked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just because there's so many little like moments where I'm like, oh my God, you know? Yeah. Th that was really cool. Uh, but I'll give you one. I'll give you, I'll give you a, one that I think is pretty fun. Uh, I don't know if it's the best experience, but it definitely was like a huge learning experience mm -hmm. and definitely something that I'll always remember. Um, so when I, when I first moved to LA, I took an internship, an unpaid internship with Mark Mothersbaugh, who is a lead singer of Devo. And he also is like a composer, film composer, TV composer, you know, worked on tons of big stuff. Yeah. Um, and he brought me in to basically be the head engineer at Mutato, his his music business. And it's on Sunset uh, Boulevard up on the strip. It looks like a Coliseum. Yeah, yeah. It's really <laughs> a really cool building. Um, but there were a lot of experiences there that I, I brought in and obviously a lot of experiences with radium, radium that have been like crazy, right? And life changing. Um, but one of my favorite experiences was I was rebuilding and redoing Studio A. So I was tearing everything out. And for some reason, I was doing something that was above my pay grade, basically mm -hmm. <laughs> tearing out the studio and installing new uh, PMC speakers and a new Ethernet um, uh, controlled Server? like everything like wow. microphone preamps focus right red net system that's crazy that was all over like uh you know whatever and so the whole studio was torn apart and we were in the middle of working on the Pee Wee herman movie uh for netflix and so the place was just a disaster mm -hmm. so we couldn't like route everything to the live room and do the session like we typically would so instead, um, I had Paul, who, Pee Wee Herman, right, mm. uh, standing right next to me. And I had my mic set up, you know, like the two mics to catch overs, you know, doing voiceover. And I got to do ADR, which is really interesting because I never you don't do ADR when you're the music place doing the score. Right. right. We do the score. I recorded the strings. I record the orchestra, stuff like that. Guitar players, singers, etc. And I'll mix and I'll and I'll engineer and I'll produce and stuff like that. But when I was in the room and they were like, we need to do a, a an ADR session mm -hmm. for this scene because he's like singing and he's, you know, up on the bridge and he's, wow. you know, and nah, da, 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 you uh -huh. know, and, and I'm sitting there going, OK, so you want me to do an ADR session just out of the blue? And I must have <laughs> been there for like three years already. Right. And I'm like, OK, now I'm doing ADR. So first of all, that was a huge learning experience. You better stay on your game. Stay understanding that you're not just going to be making music or just producing beats all day, right? If you really want to be in the music industry, yeah. you might have to do a recording session. You might need to record guitar. You might have to replace dialogue or edit or Melodyne or do something, you know, like you have to be able to be multifaceted, which goes back to just investing in yourself and your skills. Um, but I'm sitting there with Pee Wee and like everybody on the couch, the executives, the composers, the orchestrators, and I'm just like, 
got my headphones on and you're in a studio control room and you're trying to do ADR in the same room. So you're like, everybody's got to be really quiet, right? So it's just like, it was so nerve wracking, but it was such an experience because you get, you get Pee Wee here and he's like such a great actor and he's been doing it for decades, right? And he like, ha, 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 you know, doing all of his voices and shit. And I'm like, and everybody's sitting there and I'm like, hey, you guys got to be quiet. But like everyone can't stop laughing, you know, because mm -hmm. it's just like a really funny scene. And it's wow. up on the video and, you know, it's like he's doing this thing. He's like, oh, my bicycle, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, stop, you guys. Like, uh, I have to record this, you know, I probably wouldn't be able to record that. I'll be just laughing all, yeah. all day. And he's doing the, the, <laughs> you know, the yeah. Pee Wee laughs and shit. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, you guys shut up. <laughs> so everyone's all on the couch and they're like, um, uh, you know, uh -huh. and I'm like, you guys have to be really quiet, you know, <laughs> shh. Okay. Wow. Okay. Action. That's crazy. And then he'll do his thing. And then someone's like, oh my God, you know? So that was a really fun experience. That was That's something awesome. I remember forever. That's awesome, man. Yeah. It must mean super nice. Um, yeah. Let's, let's go to the next question. I think we have a couple more. Yeah. Let's do a couple more. Do you have one? Yeah, I got one right here. <laughs> You're like, so do you? <laughs> All right. So this one is from, let's see, at origin underscore AL 808. <laughs> you guys should just use your names, man. Mm -hmm. um, it's not cool enough, dude. Yeah. So, so this is, uh, the question is, what does Radium feel about pursuing live performances? Hmm. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Will answer this one. Um, he means by rating the company or no, I think just pursuing live performances as an artist. If you want to be an artist performing your art as part of it, I think what is changing about performances of, of course, with COVID and shows us how to perform, you know, long distance remotely and everything is that people are losing the sense of realness, mm -hmm. you know, on performance. Amen. And I think it's really important to like, we were just talking about that, right? Yeah. Like about the Foo Fighters show, how I got a, a little disappointed of how they, they created this cover from Bee Gees and it wasn't like that cool. Right. And it's fine. Like it, I, I'm not going to stop listening to either Bee Gees or, or Foo Fighters because of that. Like right. it's expected in a live um, environment that mistakes will happen. You yeah. know, there are human beings behind the stage, uh, on, on top of the stage. And people are losing that concept because everything is so auto tune, everything so perfectly. And when you go to a live stage situation, people forget about that. Oh yeah. shit. Yeah. Wait, he's, he's out of tune. What is going on yeah. here? Uh. Like guys, this is normal. You know, like if you commit a mistake, it's totally fine. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, uh, that's something that people needs to, really um get used to again you know on, yeah, on the yeah. live performance and the artists as well mm -hmm. the artists i've seen artists that if they don't hit every single note correctly they don't just they just panic like right. oh no i'm not ready like you know be 80 percent there and just try it out try your best that's yeah. uh i think if you're if you're chosen to be a, a performance artist either a dj or um you know a singer whatever a musician a player you you always gonna commit some mistakes and it's okay it's part of being human 100 percent. yeah i think also to expand on that that answer because um when i first started in music and i first played music and wrote songs with a band and stuff that's all we had was live performances mm -hmm. like let's be real like we wanted to play shows that's why you get in a band right because you want to get out there you want to pick up you know high school girls because you're in <laughs> high school not now. Like, I'm not trying to pick up high school girls now. <laughs> I'm married. You know what I'm saying? Not. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, right? <laughs> uh, but, but I'm like, like, how is that? How would that ever even be a question is kind of how I would think about it back then. Right. Right. Um, now I can understand the question. Like, do you think you should pursue live shows and live performances? And my answer to that is when we were in a band and we cut a record we cut the record and we had the cds before we went and played live you had to you had to have a demo you had to have something to show uh the people that that booked the shows the bands that you would open up for they have to become fans of yours and go hey man you guys fucking kick ass will you open the show for us at this mm -hmm. at this venue so that's number one right number two when we started to play our songs live First of all, we wrote the songs, we practiced them, and then we recorded them as soon as we could. We got them down. Right. 
but they weren't really like finished right but when you start performing them live you start really finishing them you start to learn what you want to perform differently the lyrics maybe change a little bit even the melodies might change a little bit the energy you put behind stuff changes a little bit and then you go shit we need to go back to the studio and re-record right. this stuff because now we've actually really got this song down <laughs> that's so funny right because because you start practicing for the shows and if you're practicing and you're practicing and practicing you start going, oh, I really don't like that part. Yeah. But you know what? I changed it and made it like this. And then everybody's like, dude, that's fucking kick ass. You know, that's an amazing dude. I love what you did there. So performances are your self-discovery tool. They're your writing tool. And I think that any band from the beginning of time would 100% agree with that. And all you have to do is look at the greats. Look at the Beatles. The Beatles are an amazing, you know, group and example of that they weren't that great at all and nobody liked any of their shit to start with and they started playing live more than anything else and performing alive a lot and it basically became a boot camp for writing music for becoming better performers getting their music theory down their playability down everything and then that turned into better records and better records turned back into bigger fans which then keeps feeding itself right bigger fans bigger stadiums right and then they got bigger live performances. Bigger live performances turn into better songs, better songwriters, better performers. They go to the studio, make better albums, which then turns into bigger performances. So it just keeps like it's a snowball effect. And I think that nowadays what is missing in music and great artists like turning into a great artist from a recording artist to a great fucking artist all the way around and great recording artist is the inability to even jump into a live performance and say, I'm going to go live perform hmm. instead. It's just, I'm just going to write songs and make tracks in the studio all day. Right. Like it's just so uninspiring sitting at a desk in front of two speakers. Yeah. It's not natural. Get out there, go watch live music, go perform live music, go perform your shit in front of anybody that'll listen. Even if it's just yeah. your family and friends and you're in your living room, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think you're losing such an opportunity to, to learn more about your own songs Facts. like the other day i was djing um for the first time in a club here in la in a club club environment and i've been a music producer for you know almost a decade now and it's the first time that i play my own songs in a club environment and i learned more that night about my own songs than the past 10 years because i could i could feel directly in direct feedback energy man it's the energy, energy and is what crazy. is sounding good what is not sounding good what works what doesn't work what what the vocals are doing what they're not like so it's you're losing so much learning opportunity there so go and perform yeah and i got one last question and then we're gonna get out of here we're gonna get out of your hair but this is a really important one and actually a pretty cool one um, this one's from at Dr. Dot Jekyll underscore beats. I know every, <laughs> everyone's like, I can't get the Dr. Jekyll beats, mm -hmm. right? So you yeah. got to do all the underscores and the dots. Um, but this is the homie. Love yeah. this guy. He's in L.A. as well. He's awesome. Yeah. Worked with him quite a bit. Just a super, super genuine, nice super dude. Super nice dude. Um, what do you see for the near term goals of Radium Records, the label? Mm. OK, so this is this is actually a really interesting question and kind of a fun one to leave on. Yeah. Um, Radium Records, the idea that came about to even open up and make a Radium Records was the the necessity of having a publisher. Right. And starting that foundation of being a publisher. And so it didn't come out of like, uh, you know, we want to grow this into a massive record label and just have all this stuff going on. Um, but he's asking about the near term goals. The near term goals are to be able to make just an incredible catalog of very, very foundational good songs. Um, I don't want to go into quantity of like, you know, playing the music library game where it's just like, give me a bunch of MTV VH1 real <laughs> housewives cues and I'm just going to go pitch them out and try to get a bunch of fucking shit place. That's all a bunch <laughs> of trash that anyone would, you right, know, just can right. poop out and like. 20 minutes you know yeah um i really wanted to spend time on records i wanted to put my own executive production and and thumbprint on everything and make the kind of music that i want to make right right uh which is a lot it spans a lot of genres um but it's really really important to me that i can make 
great records, stuff that I'm really excited about and timeless, and even my own music and put it under Radium Records and build that catalog from the ground up where in a year, in two years, in three years, there may not be a thousand records, but there's a really, really good base of a hundred songs that we own and we have in our in our catalog that becomes a sound for us and build something. And going back to answering your questions earlier about branding and what comes first and all that, the music's always gonna come first to me. So making the music and showing people like here is the music, right? Like you guys have to listen to it and see what you think and how it makes you feel and letting that develop the brand of what Radium Records is. And of course we did the colors, we did the, the graphics, the logos, all that stuff. And sure, that's an important foundation of it. But when we were going through that process of getting the brand colors and everything, we actually went really deep into what the personality is behind everything that we're doing. 100%. You know, and it, and it has a lot of psychology behind it to us. It's not necessarily for us to go like, check out our super dope fresh, like, you know, you should <laughs> fuck with us. It's more so that we're able to bring in the right people, the right artists that vibe with what we're doing and connect. And there's a fluidity with yeah. the music and we can create that base of just records and songs that are timeless, right? right? That's the biggest thing that, and the biggest goal. And that's what I foresee in the future. Um, these records being monetized through sync licensing and stuff. I'm really looking for sync licensing placements that are going to be cool and relevant and fun. And, you know, I'm not looking for the, the real housewives of VH1 or whatever. I'm looking for cool, fresh movies and directors and, you know, people making cool shit, other creators where this stuff is going to be the undertone. It's going to be the sound of those things and connect those things. You know, it doesn't always have to be a uh, McDonald's selling a cheeseburger. You know what I mean? It can be uh, a new running shoe company. Like you got to remember Nike, when they first started, weren't very big at all. And their very first client that they ever signed was Michael Jordan to the Air Jordan, right? So, and that was a big deal for them. They put a lot of money into him and they signed a really good deal with him, but they were a small, small, small company. And now look at Nike, you know? So it's really important that you put out the music and you put out the quality of what you are and what you want to represent with your art so that you can make those Michael Jordan connections. You don't need a million fucking cheeseburger commercials, you know, and this scratching around for the next VH1 Housewives queue. Um, we'd rather do it the long-term game. And so the near future is uh, just getting more records together. So you guys, to wrap it up, this is episode 100. Thank you so much for, uh, first of all, just even tuning in and watching us this long. Yeah. And hopefully a lot of this has been valuable. You know, we're trying to bring a lot of value to you guys. And I realize that about 60%, if not more, aren't even subscribed to the channel that watch these, this come content on. all the time. Come on, guys. So uh, just subscribe to the channel. Why not? We're just going to be dropping more stuff like this. The plug of the week, the mixing series. And we're doing lives. We do live song reviews on the channel. There's just a lot of stuff that we do to try to help people out there with their music career. So exactly. Um, we're going to wrap it up with a little prediction yeah so tell me tell me your predictions to let's say episode 200 how we're gonna be in the music industry what is your your main ideas tell me tell me what do you what do you think we're gonna be i think i'm gonna be like the guy that is like running up hills with their with his shirt off he's way too tan right and <laughs> and he's just like he's like the neighborhood running junkie right you right. know and they're like dude what is that guy doing <laughs> yeah and i'm gonna start wearing like different headbands right and i'm gonna get different headbands like brazil you know flag. you have to yeah i'm gonna do just different different headbands so people like around the hollywood hills neighborhood will just it's just a there's the, crazy the guy runner. with the headbands right <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just kidding uh so i think by episode 200 i mean if we really stayed on target and right. let's say we dropped one a week, yeah, you know, that's going to be 52 weeks in a year. Yeah. So that's, it's going to take another two years to get to episode 200. Yeah. By then it'd be 2023. Correct. And I think we'll be, uh, we'll be, we'll be in that one movie, the eighties movie that was redone. Hmm. 
um with ghostbusters a, no 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 with gosling ryan gosling oh yeah uh 2049 was this call yeah uh oh just i i know exactly what yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah oh shit. how do we how do we not know the movie Damn. someone on the other side of the Damn, camera oh my is god let me sons of bitches <laughs> you know so uh i think what it's gonna be really is probably very similar to what's going on right now and um i'll tell you why because humans don't really change hmm. technology changes yeah computing power gets faster yeah plugins get a little bit more powerful yeah <laughs> but humans don't change yeah and the music industry is a dinosaur so the music industry definitely doesn't change mm -hmm. the thing about the music industry is and all these podcasts and all these people on the internet giving predictions all the time most of them have been wrong about 99 percent of the time right. because they have way too much hope in the music business um and you know i'm more of a realist when it comes to that kind of stuff mm -hmm. i just know how it works i've worked with umg sony music sony atv sony masterworks um warner brothers warner chapel i still get you know royalty statements and, and checks from warner correct you know and i'm just like nothing's changed mm. nothing has changed the way that they do business is the same and everybody i think if there's any prediction that i can make as far as like how the music industry shifts or changes, um, Instagram will not be something that like a lot of artists are using a lot of, mm. unless they go and make a whole big shift in what they're doing, right? Because they are not letting or even going towards the artist. They're not giving more tools to the artist. Um, I would say that YouTube is always going to just be ran by a handful of people because they've been doing it for the last 10 years. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right and youtube's a slow moving beast and because people don't change most people will never put in the work and time to build a youtube channel as an artist producer whatever um tiktok i think is going to be much much less relevant than it is right now right now tiktok's very relevant and it gets organic reach and everybody's spouting to go run it up on tiktok the truth is that's a short that's a short play that's a short game right a lot of people are trying to blow up and get famous on tiktok but what does that do Oh, look, it got my streams up on Spotify. Okay, Spotify streams are 100% overrated and overvalued. In my honest opinion, in my humble opinion, I guess is the best way to put it. <laughs> uh, Spotify streams really mean a whole lot of jack dick shit. And the reason being is you can get a million Spotify streams and make, what, 800 bucks maybe. If you're lucky, you know, yeah, if, if, if you, you got premium, premium streams yeah. and, you, and the people were saving it and they were buying stuff on Apple Music... Yeah. You know, streams aren't really that important anymore. I think um, if you're doing it right, my prediction is by episode 200, if you're doing it right, you're going to build a fan base and you're going to listen to these podcasts and you're going to take out the things that are relevant to building a fan base and building a business. And that's all the basic principles that have never changed since the beginning of time. They're like antiques, right? They're old. They don't change. Right. We don't have new antiques. You have old antiques. And all the principles of success and business and music success, they're the same thing. Invest in yourself. Grow your skills. Network with people. Stay consistent. Mm -hmm. Be persistent. Mm -hmm. Make better music. Invest in your mixing and mastering, your production. Work with professionals and specialists. And keep practicing. Keep loving what you're doing. Keep diving in head first. So yeah. no nothing else is going to get you there it'll get you like this it'll do this for you bloop, bloop. you get those little peaks those little those yeah. little boosts of uh those those hacks yeah here's the hack dude you want to go to this website's going to boost your spotify definitely don't look for hacks if you if you want to be in this industry and be as a professional for the rest of your life or who knows hacks are win. great for blowing money exactly yeah and for yeah. those businesses that are selling you the hacks yeah and for those influencers that are selling you the hacks and for the youtubers that are selling you the hacks and the clickbait and getting streams and getting adsense money from google for sure that's the real shit though you guys aren't gonna find that anywhere else no nope. like this is the radium podcast this is the radium records channel like i'm not gonna bullshit you guys like what <laughs> we make from adsense right now is jack dick it doesn't yeah. pay for anything we're we're always doing this shit for free. Yeah. We're trying to connect with people that we really like.
people that are going to talk to us and go, dude, I fuck with those guys. You want to <laughs> grab a coffee? Cause I'll be in LA next week. Yep. Those are the people. That's why we do it. We're not sitting here trying to become rich off of YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Fuck and that. I think that that's hilarious. Fuck so by that. episode 200, we might be able to make a little bit of money and if you subscribe, <laughs> if you subscribe, <laughs> subscribe, now. buy my shit, <laughs> buy my course right here. And if you if you're listening to this podcast at Spotify, we highly recommend you to go to YouTube to watch all the things that we put it out there. Subscribe to the channel, obviously, and follow us on whatever we, you know, we are. Um, and whatever thank you so we much. are, yeah, whatever we are, whatever we are, just just follow us here. You know, in our in our place, in my in my spot. Just follow me. Yeah. <laughs> And honestly, at the at the end of the day, the only thing we really care about is that you share the yeah. podcast. If you yeah. got value out of it, if you get value out of the mix series, the plug in of the week, share it. Yeah. Give it to a friend, help somebody else out. And if we if we sucked and you're like, fuck you guys, you guys suck. You say stupid shit. That's cool, too. We're not for everybody. Yeah. I'm all right with that. I don't care. I want you to leave as well. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't so want you in my house. So subscribe or leave. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's like, you know, share it or don't share it. Or if you hate it, like just, yeah. you know, it's all good. We yeah. don't care. But that's the only thing I ask is like, yeah. if you did get something out of it and you're like, wow, I just learned some stuff. This was great. I'm going to apply this stuff. Or maybe it made you think of something in a different way or like solve a problem for you in your music career or got your ass up and motivated, like share it. Like it, comment on it, Let's subscribe talk. to the channel, do something, you know, make an action. We're very approachable, guys. I we're promise. not, we're not stars here. Most we're, of the time. Yeah. Unless I'm really sweaty. Yeah. No, yeah. You <laughs> definitely don't want to be close to Brad when, when he finishes his, uh, his run yeah. uphill. Super sweaty. Don't, don't be close to him. But we, pre we appreciate you guys hundred yeah. percent because of you. That's the only reason we even do this. Like if there wasn't even like anybody watching, why would we do this? Right. <laughs> So uh, 100 episodes in the bag. Thanks again. Love you guys. See ya. Peace.